Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a brand new Les Paul that wants to be a Telecaster Custom. No, this isn't a brand new 2019 model. This is a new old stock Gibson Marauder from 1979. This is another one of those guitars I picked up from that collection up in Michigan. And this thing... It literally is brand new. The guy said about five or ten years ago he found a shop that just had a bunch of old stock and he bought up everything he could. So this thing is probably one of the cleanest Marauders out there. But let's learn a little bit about what the Marauder is anyways. The Marauder was another Bill Lawrence creation similar to like the L6S. Prototypes were done in 1974, and they were finally shipped out in 1975, and they were discontinued in 1979, but you can find them being produced all the way until the very early 80s, around 1981. In that relatively short time period, they managed to kick out over 7,000 of these puppies. Approximate numbers are around 4,700 in natural, about 1,400 in wine red, 460 in an ebony finish, 240 in a tobacco burst, and there's a Marauder custom model with approximately 83 of those made. These were designed as an entry-level guitar to kind of take over some of the market share of the bolt-on cheap guitar stuff because they wanted to compete with Fender as well as all the cheap import brands. They wanted something inexpensive that still sounded good. So what they did is they gave it a Les Paul-esque shape, a flying V headstock, and they try to make it look like a Telecaster. More specifically, a Telecaster Custom. You've got the humbucker look in the neck and then a single coil in the bridge. Now this isn't actually a single coil, it's just a blade styled humbucker, but it has the illusion of it. You can find these things made out of mahogany, you can find them made out of alder, you can find some with maple ones. I believe this one is mahogany. The one thing every model had in common was a maple neck, but you could find them with maple fretboards to be more similar to a fender or rosewood. There's rumors of a few of them also having ebony. But these were the Kiss Smash guitars. Many of the factory seconds of this model or ones that just didn't work out in general, they would play their good guitars during the show and then right before they start to smash them, they would switch them out for one of these. So these are kind of infamous for that reason. But are they any good? I'm here to tell you that yes, I love the Marauder. Its brother, the S1, is also a fantastic guitar. The S1 is basically Gibson's Stratocaster. The only thing that would kind of predate that would be like the Melody Makers that had the three pickups. But this one, as we've discussed, is more so styled after a Telecaster. So you still get kind of twangy tones, but you also get kind of a thicker tone at the same time as compared to like the S1. But the Marauder had three different phases to it. In its early years of production, it started off with a three-way toggle switch right here. That would select the bridge, it would select both of them, and then just the neck. That is the version I ultimately prefer. Now in 1976, they decided, mm, let's change that up. And they went to this. They put a blend knob in that position instead of a three-way switch. Now in this example, the chicken head knob has been replaced, but what it does is when you have the knob turned all the way this way, you're on just the bridge pickup. When you have it turned all the way this way, it's just the neck. So you kind of got to guess what might be the middle to get the middle position. But what's kind of quirky about these ones is you can blend like 25% of the neck and 75% of the bridge or like 5%, 95%. You get the idea. You get a lot more tonal opportunities with this 
But at the same time, it's a lot less convenient just to get to the bass tone that you're looking for. But I don't like having a million options. I like just having three set sounds to choose from. There's a lot of people that prefer this one. You'll also notice that the earlier Marauders have a clear pickup on them. You can actually see through to the Bill Lawrence design. But let's get back to the new old stock one. This is the third iteration of the Marauder. They decided, oh, somebody's gonna complain that they're gonna accidentally hit it while they're strumming. So they moved it down here in between the master volume and master tone. It's the exact same rotary switch, and this one has the original chicken head knob on it. The blend switch wouldn't be so bad if it was exactly what it said. If it just went from your treble pickup to your rhythm pickup, if it was just this sweeping motion, I think I could live with it. But it's not just that. It goes from here and all the way pretty much around again. So it really does make it difficult if you just want to get from the bridge all the way to the neck pickup. It's not quite as simple as a three-way toggle switch, but it does offer you the in-betweens of all of these. So there's pros and cons to this setup. These all came with a harmonica bridge. This is kind of the model that they just tried to use all those things up on. You've got a traditional tailpiece. Your output is on the front. You have a traditional Gibson scale at 24.75 inches with 22 frets. These weren't 24 fret monsters like the L6S, which is kind of another cousin to these guitars. You can also see here on this example, towards the end of the run, they started to switch them to these black covers, kind of like the L6S Deluxe. That way, if you don't like the quirkiness of the see-through bobbins, you can have kind of a more evil looking guitar. So overall, I really do suggest checking out the Marauder and S1. They might not have been popular back in their day, but there's a certain quirky vintage nature about these guitars that makes them really enjoyable for me whenever I can get them in. But let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Now with this guitar being new old stock, I realized something that just never hit me before. These were stock with a matte finish on the body, but a gloss finish on the neck. Now here's why I didn't realize this before now. Back to my buddy's marauder here. Uh, he's in the Navy. I've been babysitting this guitar for the past couple of years. But a matte finish will eventually get rubbed into a semi-gloss finish. I mean, you could take this and buff it and it would become super glossy. But you see these areas and how they've been transformed? The bulk majority of these that got played at some point in time will have lost their matte finish to it. So that was the very first thing that stood out on this new old stock Marauder at just how matte the finish was. We'll take a quick look at this one. You can see playing it, you get some scratches on the headstock. Usually the fretboard will start to show some wear. The clear coat will rub off. Again, you lose the matted finish and it starts becoming gloss. It's also common for the pick guard to chip in the extremity areas such as right here and like right there. And you'll get some buckle marks and whatnot. You can also see how the lacquer has become golden in color. So after reviewing that more worn one, just in case you've never even seen one of these guitars before, now you can appreciate the beautiful pristine condition of this. You have a very maple looking neck yet. It hasn't completely turned golden. And this body, now do you see why it's just so mind-bogglingly matted? And it's just fantastic. I've never seen one in person quite this clean. I mean, the pickguard, it's got some light scratches to it, but nothing extreme. But that's just kind of the beauty of this guitar. This is a collector's grade Marauder. If you need a super clean one in your collection, look no further than this. I mean, it's not perfect. It's got some wear just from sitting in the case, but let's go ahead and look at this. You've got some light marks here on the headstock, probably from like a string change and whatnot. Truss rod works just fine. The frets show minimal, if any wear at all. <laughs> I mean, this thing really was not played, but sometimes just sitting in the case with the strings pressed up against it, that can form some wear over time the face of the guitar here. You've got some light scuffs just because of my light handling of it here, as well as some general appreciation marks, I guess we can call it. I mean, you've got some light scratches on the pick guard, but it's black. It's gonna show everything anyways. But you don't have any chips or cracks in the pick guard. I mean, this thing is incredibly clean. Back of the headstock, our serial number is 72349612. Made in USA, you have your Gibson branded tuners. Beautiful maple neck. This neck's actually got a little bit of chunk to it. I would say it's like a medium C profile, almost what I would consider like a medium neck territory. You got a little bit of figuring to the maple, but not enough to really write home about. Essentially, the best part about this example is it's just ridiculously clean. You don't see many in this type of condition. I think I've seen maybe three or four others in my time of looking at these guitars. The only spot that you do have some wear here is right here. This is where it rubbed against the case all those years in storage or when it got moved around. So you've got some scuff marks right there. And that's true on both sides of this guitar body. But besides those little marks, you just have some very fine, like, polishing marks on this guitar. And that's it. This thing is just stupid clean. Now, despite being in a case most of its life, things still did age. You can see the body still does glow. It looks like you might have a little bit of clear coat wear there but the knobs are glowing and everything is looking good on this body. Take a look at those smudge marks from the case. I mean, nothing too bad on this one. The side's looking good as well. 
Again, this area is just from rubbing against the case. Whoa, guys. I gotta share this with you. The case is glowing really funnily over there. Ah, uh, but first we'll look at the neck here. Everything is in good shape on here. I always love these maple fretboard ones because we get to blacklight them as well. I mean, these are such cool guitars. But let me go get this case for you. It's awesome. Okay, so this is just a standard red interior case here. But it, oh, isn't that just cool? It's like orange now under black light. I like that. I thought I'd share it with you guys. Even the case for this one is ridiculously clean. You've got some very light scuffs here or there. And I'm sure the shipping process might give you a few here or there too. But uh, it's pretty darn clean. You've got a hang tag here that says 1979 new. That's probably just from where the guy got it at that store. But handle functions fine. All the latches are working perfectly. That's some sticker residue from a case label. And the inside is a nice red color here. What's important to note about this one is just how plush this case is. Usually when you get these things, you know, they're vintage from 70s. They also used these in like the early to mid 80s alongside the chainsaw case. But generally the padding's gone out of them. So it's nice to see what these, you know, used to originally be. Inside the case compartment sleeps the original Gibson warranty paperwork for this, as well as the case, another little pamphlet, and the case keys. So this is a pretty darn complete example. If you think you might be interested in owning this exceptionally fine Gibson Marauder, feel free to check out the link in the description that will take you to the for sale ad. Thank you troglodytes for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.